determination. Put simply, I don't believe they think we're serious. We should disabuse them of that notion. All options, including the use of American military assets, must remain on the table. If sanctions can cripple the Maduro regime, we've, we have to continue on that path. But so far, sanctions alone aren't stopping the Maduro regime, and the United States needs to start considering the use of military assets to bring aid to the millions of starving and sick Venezuelans. I call on all of our allies and those supporting Guaido to help us in this effort. Let me repeat that. The United States must consider the use of military assets to bring aid to the people of Venezuela. But that doesn't end the conversation. If embargoes and blockades can help, we should consider them. And if military force on the part of the United States and our allies in the region is necessary to rid us of the scourge of Maduro and his thugs, then we absolutely cannot rule it out. If the Venezuelan people, through their elected National Assembly and their own laws and constitution, request assistance to restore constitutional government and democracy, we should be, we should be ready to answer that call. Unfortunately, the Maduro regime is not broken yet. And you can count on millions and billions of dollars looted from the Venezuelan people and generated from 20 years of narco-trafficking. The Cubans, Russians, and Chinese see Venezuela as an economic opportunity. But more importantly, they see a chance to intimidate the United States to be a thorn in our side. This is a great power confrontation and one that our national defense